Welcome back, Tangerine Eat. It is October 31st, the day when Dia de Muertos really gets started. We've been out at this time on previous days and there was nobody around. Ghost no town, one. total ghost town. But as you can see behind us, there is what I believe is the start of a comparsa, which is a little procession, kind of like a parade, where people get together, they're wearing costumes, the different outfits, usually sometimes they match. There's, there's band of music to go along with it. It's very lively and fun. Mm -hmm. I really want to see like what all is going to be happening here but we're super hungry so that's gonna have to wait let's go get some food wow So up until this point, we really haven't eaten anywhere outside of the center of the city. So Jordan found this, what we think is going to be an awesome spot to grab a bite to eat. Yeah, we're walking over. It's an 18 minute walk from Centro to Barrio Xochimilco. That's the name of the neighborhood. And the restaurant is Chepiche Cafe. That was so good. We are set for some exploring. All right. Meow. Meow. Oh, and we also got into some shenanigans last night where it did not rain on our parade this time. You want a lively celebration? Oaxaca is the place to be. It is the 30th of October now. We just went in and saw Los Altares de los Ocho Regiones, or the altars of the eight regions of Oaxaca. Altars. I think that's the same thing as Ofrenda, but I'm not totally sure. What did you think? They were all gigantic and colorful and... Elaborate? Yeah. I was having a hard time knowing what to look at. Like, you walk up to one and, well, there was so much to look at in each one, and some of them were super organized and more linear, and others were just sort of like all over the place with different offerings for the loved ones. One thing I will say is that we have a lot to learn about altares, about altars. I don't know nearly enough to even know what most of the stuff signifies, including uh -huh. like the bread and the flowers and all that type of thing. And that it gets even more complex that there's eight different regions of Oaxaca and they all look so, so, so different. You said you had a lot to learn about altars. I have a lot to learn about everything here. Yes, everything to do with Dia de Muertos. And I'm excited because tomorrow we are taking some cemetery tours and learning all there is to learn about this whole, like, all the celebrations and the traditions and why things are the way that they uh -huh. are and where they developed. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that because up until this point, I've just been enjoying it. I've just been like along for the ride. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Me too. So we wanted to visit the cemetery here in Xochimilco since it's very close to the restaurant and this Barrio Xochimilco is pretty cool. What do you think? It's so colorful. There's like art all over the place and on that street over there the buildings were like totally decorated like the the full walls of the buildings uh -huh. were decorated. And there's a squawking dog, some squawking birds. A squawking dog. I like this one. This is cool. Are the skeletons killing the devil? Not sure what's going on here. So we're in this Pantheon now and to be honest I always feel a little bit like weird going into these because obviously we don't have anyone buried here and we don't want to be disrespectful um, but you can see that people are behind me setting up with flowers and different decorations and I want to say that it's not it's it's an okay thing to check this out because they're selling tours to cemeteries all over the place here in Oaxaca like people are asking us to take tours all the time so hopefully it is. Well, I'm really antsy to get back closer to Centro because that's basically where most of the comparsas are happening. And who knows what else? Honestly, we're still just along for the ride. <laughs> This has got to be my favorite wall I've seen in all of Oaxaca. It's filled with many goats. 
look, there, if you look closely, there's actually two skulls. Oh, yeah. oh cool. Yeah, it smells something out here. Dia de Muertos. Awesome. We're walking back. We happen upon this market filled with all flowers. It smells I, so good here. It smells so good. I swear to goodness, how can you be un unhappy when it just looks like this everywhere? And then you've got these beautiful murals all over the wall. This is right outside of Mercado Sanchez Pascuas. Pascuas. I have such trouble pronouncing things, or at least it's this week maybe. <laughs> As many of you guys know by now, we're living in Puerto Morelos, Quintana Roo. Something I really miss is that there's no mercados like this where you can buy a bunch of fresh local things. We typically just go to a grocery store like Shadrawi. And yes, there are probably some in Playa del Carmen and Cancun, but it's nice to have them in your neighborhood. And I just love going in them. It's like such a blast of Mexican culture. Ah. We, we only have a uh, little mercaditos with verduras, vegetables and fruits and stuff, uh -huh. but nothing like this. Yeah. Where it's a legit market. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, if you weren't getting enough attention already, now everyone wants to take pictures of you. I thought this was going to be my disguise. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it is, but now even like more wants to take thumb. pictures. <laughs> Especially with this and the matching blouse. I'm so happy. I am so happy. I just told Jordan. Okay. Wait, what? Vamonos. Oh, you're gonna get us killed crossing these streets. I know, I know. I just told Jordan I can die now because this just checked off my Dia de Muertos bucket list. And I told her she's not allowed. <laughs> I'm so happy this looks amazing. They made it match this shirt. This shirt that I got from Chiapas. It is so bright and vibrant and colorful. I don't even know what to say. Just so happy. <laughs> One of the things there are no shortage of in Oaxaca City, to my delight, is eloteros. Or in this case, an elotera, meaning a woman who sells elote and esquite. Esquites. So I got a vaso, a cup of esquites, and it's, oh my gosh, this is just heaven for me. So what is it for those who haven't been around? Oh, well this is 20 pesos for uh, corn on the cob, but it's off the cob with some spicy stuff and some cream and some cheese and some magic and it's delicious. Now I just have to figure out how to eat it with all this face painting <laughs> without ruining it. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Guys, if you're liking this video so far, please consider subscribing to our channel because we put out tons of videos about Mexico and also our travels all across the world. And we hope you'll join us in another video. Coming up behind me is another comparsa. These happen so randomly all up and down the streets. Like, I don't think any of them are going and you never know where it's going to be. And can you hear me now? the same one but these two look like they have some spices on them so we took a risk and got five bags yeah we practically cleaned her out <laughs> <laughs> here's a moment of truth I'm gonna be sorely disappointed if they're not the same oh they're good yes Hooray! no more embarrassing yelling in the street for me mm -mm. semillas de calabaza so I guess it's a street food kind of day. We got three churros for 15 pesos. They're perfect. Sugary on the outside, then a crunchy layer, and then a soft, chewy layer. Mm, We 
are back at Zandunga because I cannot get enough of this dish. I am in love with it. Sorry, Maddie. <laughs> uh. <laughs> sorry but. because it's mole and I can't eat it. No, sorry because I'm in love with the dish and not you. Oh, I, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think if I were a true Mexican, I would take the tortilla and dip it in the mole like this. But I like tacos, so I'm going to make a taco out of it. <laughs> That's yeah. the way of a true Mexican, also. Well, maybe, but I, I generally see Mexicans use it, dipping tortillas into a sauce when oh, they have yeah. it. Yeah, and we have to refuel for tonight because with the cemetery tours and everything, we are going to be up way past our bedtime till one in the morning. So, besides my esquites that I got, I have some espresso here because that's the only thing that's going to keep me up. <laughs> Our Airbnb host was telling us that each year the Dia de Muertos celebration here in Oaxaca has become less and less traditional as you see uh, some more elements of Halloween uh, kind of sneak into it each year. Speaking of that, there have been a lot of kids that have been coming up to us with like trick or treat buckets, like, like little, little pumpkins. pumpkins or bags or whatever. Yeah. I honest to goodness don't know if I'm supposed to give them money or candy or because like, what they're asking for. What they're asking for, yeah. I, I haven't made out any uh, words that they've said to us. No, no, they just walk up and it's like, I'm so sorry, like you're adorable, but I don't know what you are. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can make our way through the crowd. I present to my love a rose. Aww, gracias, mi amor. <laughs> so, people walk up to our table like this all the time, trying to sell jewelry and all this kind of stuff. Usually we turn them down, uh, but when we can, we like to help out a little. And in this case, we gave him 20 pesos instead of the 15 he was asking. I personally always prefer to the uh, buy from the people who are selling something rather than the ones who are just asking for money, but that's just my personal preference. But I think this is pretty cool. It, it takes some handy work to make these. So we had the question for you earlier about what these kids were asking for who had their little uh, pumpkin buckets. And we just saw some a couple kids counting their loot, and it was both coins and candy. So either one works. <laughs> you know, I'll be honest. When I used to trick or treat as a kid, like some houses, they didn't have candy. They would give me money. I yeah. was so dang excited to have money and like you know it'd be a quarter or something because yeah. like oh, I'm rich a quarter oh my gosh <laughs> so I'm sure that's got to be how they're feeling right now <laughs> Pumpkin. Pumpkin. <laughs> oh, how 
cute would Laska be dressed up, you guys? Oh, I miss her. <laughs> so while sipping some mezcal, this tour started off with them showing us a little bit about Day of the Dead and the history about it. It was actually interesting to learn that there's different levels to the altars. There's one that's for two and three and seven. seven. Uh -huh. So I didn't know that before. Probably going to butcher this, but I think the first one we're going to is called Pocototlan. We are on our way. So there is so much traffic that our tour guide said, okay, well, we can either wait in traffic forever or we can walk 10 blocks to get there. I can already tell how commercialized this is. So I'm guessing it's gonna be really busy, but we are on our way to the older cemetery right now. So far, this tour isn't what I was expecting. But it turns out that after having mezcal and eating and them telling us a little bit about Dia de Muertos and the histories and then they provided transportation and they're like, okay, um, we're going to meet back here in 90 minutes. We haven't found a cemetery, but we did find a concert. busy of the two. So here's my question. Earlier we were in a cemetery and I was thinking I don't want to be disrespectful by being in here because you don't have anyone buried here. Now there's dozens or hundreds of people in this cemetery and there's families who are actually trying to mourn the loss of their loved ones or celebrate their lives and there's people just like crouching in front of them and blocking their ways to try to get pictures and videos. Is this disrespectful or is this kind of supposed to be a memory of them and it's cool that there's a lot of people gathering that memory. So we left the older cemetery pretty quickly. Personally, I was pretty disgusted with what I saw in there because people were trying to be with their loved ones in there and then there were swarms of people like cutting them off, getting in front of them to take a picture of what they have put over the grave. I think it's a weird dynamic, honestly. I found a friend. Cemetery. There's so many people here, it's absurd. So we actually picked the old one to go to first because we thought it would have less people. And although it was like that in the entrance here, it feels like a total party in here. People are celebrating the lives of their loved ones. I feel like this is kind of what Dia de Muertos is about. on third cemetery of night. We both almost fell asleep on the way over here. We were supposed to be back home a half hour ago, <laughs> but the traffic was so bad. But this third one, this is what I have always imagined Dia de Muertos being about. So this is about the liveliest cemetery I've ever seen. <laughs> concert going on. Everyone was in a much more lively 
upbeat manner and And I'm people. sure you're not trying to say that the first one we went to was doing it wrong. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. But I mean, as far as what I pictured, and I felt like we were being disrespectful at the first one. Here, I felt like we were being part of the celebrations or part of the memory making or like commemorating of the loved ones and whatnot. I've never seen a cemetery so lively though. No, <laughs> never. Everyone's walking around with beers, vendors all over the place. I saw multiple people pouring it out, you know, like pouring a beer out or whatever on the gravestone of their loved one. And so I think that's what it's really all about is remembering the people that you loved and welcoming them back and remembering the lives that they had. And I think that's really special. <laughs> To excuse her, Maddie's a bit of a zombie this morning because we were up way past our bedtime. So this morning, I am getting a pan de elote, a tamal de elote, and chilequiles de elote. I'm on a bit of an elote kick. But I almost forgot, Restaurante Catedral brings out memelitas de elote también. <laughs> So a memela or a memelita is kind of like a sope, so it has a corn masa base with a little bit of sauce in this case and some cheese on top of it. They're really tasty here. These are my favorite chilaquiles I've ever had. They're also some of the most expensive at 160 pesos, but they're so, so good. Amigos, we have a really quick recommendation for you. This is something that we put off for far too long, and that mm -hmm. is getting a VPN. It not only protects you from people who want to skim your data when you connect to restaurant Wi-Fi uh -huh. or something like that, but it also helps you do some cool things like get US Netflix while you're in Mexico. You can place yourself in the US. You can watch your guilty pleasure shows like Shameless mm -hmm. is mine and yeah, I have no shame about that. I really like it, but... <laughs> yeah, so if you look up the availability of Netflix shows, if you're in the U.S., you get something like 6,500 different options of shows and movies, whereas in Mexico, you only get about one-third of that selection. But if you have a VPN, you can relocate. And that's just one of the cool things that can happen when you have a VPN. If you're interested in either of these things, of protecting yourself or getting some other fun stuff, you can head over to tangerinevpn.com, and that takes you to mm -hmm. the VPN that we recommend the most. Very affordable, super easy to sign up and integrate it into your life. <laughs> and we're an affiliate, so we will get a commission if you make a purchase after clicking on our link, which we really appreciate. That helps us continue making videos just like this one. We're here at the stadium. It's a Estadio Tecnologico, and they're putting on a free show tonight. It's Coco the Musical, and we're here 35 minutes before the show, and there's already a lot of people here. Kind of excited for this because Coco is all about Day of the Dead. I'm interested to see what it's going to be like and how it's going to compare to the movie. This is pretty cool. Not only is this event free, but they're also handing out waters and fruit to everyone who's walking in. Everyone's yelling for them. The poor kids by us aren't getting in here. I thought that was fun. It was more or less like the movie with their own unique takes here and there. I was a little bit surprised that they did like some clips of the movie and then added the play yeah, yeah, slash too. musical to it. It was more like a play, it seemed like to me. Oy, pobrecito! Oy, estos días? Ay, yo te advertí que no vinieras a esta plaza. Ahora, vámonos a casa. Ya! Uh, pero abuelita, solo estaba platicando. Además, mi casa solo estaba viendo. We quickly found out who funded it because they spent a half hour before the show praising themselves. And now we're 
back here at the city center of Oaxaca City trying to find out where the comparsas are. There's supposedly three huge ones tonight, so that's why we left the musical early to come back here. There's a couple people out here tonight. <laughs> couple. Can anyone tell me what the heck a Congre Burger El Bob is? I wonder if they always use Bob. Like, I feel like they're always <laughs> named something Bob. That's not even a Mexican name. <laughs> oh, sh. Oh, oh, my gosh. Do you want to close the window? No. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is, this is like right eye level. Be careful. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I was kind of sad because I thought we'd totally missed the biggest comparsa of the Dia de Muertos celebrations and um, because it took us a while to get back from the Coco musical but as it turns out one of them just went down our street so we literally got a front row view of it from like a high vantage point. So cool! I'm, I'm ecstatic right now. <laughs> it's strange, most places, well pretty much anywhere I've ever been, when it rains, it gets cooler. Well, when we first got here, it was raining every evening, but then it stopped raining the last couple days. Thank and now goodness. It's, yeah, thank goodness. But now it's way colder, which is super weird. It's freezing. To me, this is freezing, and it's probably like 58, 60 degrees. What's the current temperature? 60. Hey, I was it's right. 60. 60 degrees, but we're bundled up because we're weenies. Yeah, well, we, we live in the traffic, so, oh gosh, we're gonna die. Jordan, how many times are you gonna just pull me into traffic? It, it's okay. As long as it takes until you kill me? You, you completed your bucket list of getting your face painted. It is not, it's not painted anymore. It needs to be painted. If I'm gonna die, I wanna die beautiful. <laughs> you are beautiful. Aww. Being part of Dia de Muertos here in Oaxaca, I'm so torn. On the one hand, I wanna be part of all of it. I wanna see it all, I wanna smell it all, I wanna experience it all. But then on the other hand, I'm super exhausted after all of these days of fiestas and then of course being around so many people is like whoa Nelly child So we ran into a couple earlier who had seen our videos and on them they had a pile of pumpkin seeds, toasted pumpkin <laughs> seeds just like we told you about. Guys, I swear if we can if you sell or if you buy all the pumpkin seeds on the market and we can't get any more, then we're just not going to tell you this stuff anymore. I'm just stop making videos. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm totally joking, guys. Um, <laughs> Buy them up. Support local vendors. Eat yes. all those semillas de calabaza. Scream in the streets. Do uh, what you want to do. We just found this potato street stand market guy. And street stand market guy. Exactly. Street, exactly. <laughs> and they serve potatoes in a bunch of different ways. They slice it. They spiral it. They okay, chop it, it up. They chop it up like, like fries, but I got this big old thing of potato chip looking things. I've okay. already I've already eaten quite a few. Uh, 29 pesos. Now, oh yeah, for sure. Nailed it! 
guys, how cute is this? They dress the dog up to make it look like their parents. It is November 2nd, the official last day of Dia de Muertos. So we're wrapping things up here. We decided before this all finishes off, we wanted to head to Panteón General, which is probably the number one that was recommended to us to visit. Yeah, and that's, that translates to the general cemetery, the main cemetery. It's in a neighborhood that's very close to the center of Oaxaca. It took us about like 15 minutes to get here, so pretty close. And there's a lot more Oh yeah, it's actually really lively right over here to our right. So it's about 4, 4.30 in the afternoon and I was not expecting there to be this many people here but this is about as lively as it gets and what I love is that it's just about all Mexicans bringing their food out and flowers uh -huh. and having just a great time. What a cool atmosphere. <laughs> and if you want some cheap food, you can come here. Uh-huh. Everything at the end. Ten pesos for everything. Not really, but pretty much. <laughs> In a previous video, we were trying to get to the bottom of whether the celebration is called Dia de Muertos or Dia de los Muertos, because there seems to be a lot of conflicting information on that. But based on the comments in one of our previous videos, in most places in Mexico, it seems like it's Dia de Muertos. But we did confirm that there are some places in Mexico where they add the los. of you who live in Oaxaca or know the answer to this, is this stuff right outside of Panteón General something that goes on every day or every weekend or is it just specific to the holiday? I'm curious to know that. Yeah, from where I'm standing it's like it looks pretty permanent to me but at the same time I can't imagine this type of partying goes on all the time. Yeah, but like I remember in Ch when we were living near Chapala, that was something I thought was just for that one special holiday weekend, uh -huh. but it turns out it's there every single day. Uh -huh. So I'm curious about here too. So this one is huge. I thought at first like how great it is that they had what I saw was like four, four, four entrances or so, but I can I can totally see why now, because it is gigantic. I don't even know where we are inside of here anymore. Some of these tombs are bigger than apartments that I've lived in. This is crazy. Of the cemeteries we visited here in Oaxaca, this is definitely the most organized and also the most elaborate. Most of yeah. these are gigantic, so I'm, I'm, I'm seriously wondering if this is where the wealthy people get buried. I, I assume it's a lot more expensive here. The other ones... If there's even <laughs> lots of land still available. The other ones, a lot of them were like, some people were buried with just a mound of dirt over top. And uh -huh. here, there's like, like you said, they're just huge. There's giant rooms for some of them. Mm -hmm. So it's, wow. What this reminds me of, that song we were hearing repeatedly last night. How does it go again? Tumbas por allí, tumbas por allá, tumbas, 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 ha 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 ha. It's gonna be stuck in my head for the yeah. rest of my life. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you wanna share what just happened? Um, do you? Well, we are walking through the cemetery and then this very nice and festive family insisted we take a shot of mezcal and it was delicious, by the way, where can I get some? But this, once again, is what I would picture for this, the festivities of Dia de Muertos. The first one, in addition to it having very somber music, just felt like a little bit like a... Ah, oh man, I still don't have words for that first one. But this, on the other hand, way cool. I, I love that families come together, families and friends come together to celebrate the lives of loved ones instead of making it a sad thing, making it something to celebrate because life is something to celebrate.
So unlike when we were doing the tour, I feel like I can be in this one without being intrusive or disrespectful. I'm much more comfortable being here than those others. How about you? I also enjoy seeing all this in the daytime. Like mm -hmm. all the flowers and the vibrant colors and the way everyone is celebrating. Calavera taking a selfie. Or this is not a Calavera. Oh, Katrina? Katrina. Katrinita taking a selfie. Hola. Buenas tardes. Quiero leche quemada, por favor. I don't know how to describe it. Can I get a bigger spoonful? I have too much makeup for that little. <laughs> All right, for the first time ever, me neither. <laughs> I don't know how to describe this. Huh. It actually tastes like a slight, slight taste of burnt ice cream. And I literally have no words. I don't know what it tastes like. It's cold, like ice cream. It's sweet, like ice cream. <laughs> I said it tastes burnt, but I feel like that's the wrong word. More like charred, like charred taste with yeah, ice yeah, cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can kind of taste that too. Look at you, Jordan, describing it in a way I couldn't. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> you doing it again with the tejate? I got this again. I would have said when I first tried it, I don't recommend it. It's weird, but it's like really good. <laughs> it's almost like a, somewhat of like a hardened whipped cream on top. Maybe you could describe it like that. But it and dissolves it melts, instantly in your it mouth. It melts in your mouth and then it's got kind of a chocolatey taste to it. So yeah, I'm a big fan. You should definitely try this and don't be weirded out at first or maybe just like give it a second shot. I was told one time by someone in Sprouts or Whole, Whole Foods when I was trying coconut milk, you might not like it the first time, you might not like it the second time, but if you don't like it by the third time, you're never gonna like it. And by the third time that I tried coconut milk, I liked it. So it was like, thanks to that guy, I'll give anything at least three tries. This time, happened on the second time, or so far, the first and a half. So far, you've only given Chapulines one try though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, you got me there. <laughs> Some when we got this hot chocolate. They had some at their booth. Oh shoot, I hope that's not what I got. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, this is an expo with chocolate, so that's what I had to get. Chocolate Caliente, which is a specialty here in Oaxaca, and it's basically hot chocolate, but I think way better and richer, and probably because it's like local artisanal chocolate from cacao beans grown in Oaxaca. I don't know entirely how this is made, but it actually tastes kind of spicy. Not in like a hot spicy kind of way, but as in that there's other spices. So that's either the complexity of the chocolate or perhaps there are. So we're gonna have to do some more digging into that or maybe you can let us know in the comments if you know. But my favorite part of this is they're all giving out samples. Samples. <laughs> so we get to try it all. Okay. How's this? I love this stuff. It's like rice with some milky, creamy stuff and a little bit of cinnamon flavor. Mm. All that for 15 pesos. The sign said 20. I don't know why it was 15. Mm. That is good. It's like cinnamony and mm. uh -huh. tastes like Christmas to me. Okay, so behind me here is something that I've never before seen in Mexico, but this is something that my Mexican family has made before, and they're called buñuelos, which, the way, at least the way that my family made them, it's like a big flour tortilla that's fried up, and then you put this delicious syrup, what I now think is, was piloncillo syrup. And you break them into pieces, and then you 
and then you just, yeah, you like break it up, put the syrup on there and eat it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I can't believe this is the first time in Mexico I've ever, I'm ever seeing this. And you can get a big old bucket of them for 35 pesos here. Something I totally wasn't expecting with this. Expecting? Expecting. <laughs> Something. Oh, what were you expecting? What I totally was not expecting with Dia de Muertos here in Oaxaca is that there are so many people that are dressed up like different things. Like this guy, well, I would have thought that it would be a woman, but this guy has corn husks out the wazoo made of a dress and a big headdress. Literally and out the wazoo. <laughs> out the wazoo. But there's so many people dressed up as things, I bet it's a very lucrative career to do that around this time of year. If I had yeah, to guess. But some of them are so elaborate, like that is unreal. I can't even imagine how long it would take to make that, let alone put or it all on. on. Yeah. Take it all off? Whoa. <laughs> okay, so it is the night of the second, meaning things are like officially coming to a close. And it has been a whirlwind to celebrate Dia de Muertos here in Oaxaca. I'm honest to goodness not sure if I'm relieved that it's over because we've been doing so much and non-stop and it's been a lot of fun the whole time. I'm or, <laughs> or sad. I'm a little bit sad because it's been so much fun. It's like kind of when you go on a really great vacation and then you have to come back, you have that like vacation hangover that you have to get over. Mm -hmm. I have mixed feelings right now. <laughs> and now I have to wash this paint off. I have mixed feelings about that too. <laughs> oh my goodness, this was such a fun time. I think D experiencing Dia de Muertos in Oaxaca is by far one of my favorite experiences that has ever happened to us since traveling ever, anywhere, in the whole world, in my whole life. I hope you enjoyed this video because we worked really, really, really hard to put this together. If you did, please consider subscribing to our channel because we put out other videos about Mexico and traveling all around the world. And on the end screen right here, we're going to link our binge watch everything playlist. So if you want to see our whole story from the beginning when we started traveling through Mexico in 2018, you can go there and easily watch it in order. Before you go, one more thing though. Gong that bell! Join the gong squad so that you will be notified the next time we put out a new video. And we'll see you soon. <laughs>